John Dean. Hey, everybody. Um, glad to be here. What an honor to introduce the President of the United States. Uh, and especially to all my union brothers and sisters that are here. Me and my friend Reed drove up from Pittsburgh. We're both retired Teamsters. Nothing affected our lives more than the Butch Lewis Act. And uh, I'm a second generation Teamster from Local 249 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Actually. President Biden started his campaign four years ago at our Teamster Temple in Pittsburgh, and he's been the greatest friend of labor in my lifetime, if not history. And I just wanted to give you a little personal part of how the Butch Lewis Act affected me. So after eight years of retirement and 35 years of paying into my pension uh, as an active, you know, active driver, and uh, I drove for the local grocery chain, I was notified by the Western Pennsylvania Teamster Pension Fund that our pension fund was in critical and declining condition. So this is after uh, eight years of retirement. Uh, so what we were faced with was either taking a 30% cut to our pension or let it go bankrupt in a couple of years because it was in critical and declining condition. So we voted to take a 30% cut. So as far as I went, I was lucky enough to have 35 years you know, paying into the pension and uh, and I left there, so I got 30, I was getting $3,500 a month, which was a nice pension. So the 30% cut to me meant $1,000 a month. So that's a pretty substantial cut to any working man, especially, you know, you, you've planned your retirement with, you know, your pension, your Social Security, if you're lucky enough to have a 401k. So uh, it was devastating, and it was, uh, you know, I was looking forward to a com comfortable retirement with, like I said, the Social Security and the 401. But, you know, I was in a little bit better shape than some. I had my house and car paid off. But some people had mortgages, car payments, and they're helping their kids with college. And some were just having to cut back for groceries and medication. I mean, that's a, it was a 30% cut, so not everyone took the same amount. But 30% is 30%, no matter how much you were getting. So the Butch Lewis Act, which was introduced, Butch Lewis was a teamster from Cincinnati, Ohio, who had introduced this act that would save these pensions. So to make us whole again, and the previous administration obviously uh, did nothing to forward the Butch Lewis Act, and uh, and many of the people were you know living on the edge, and I myself thought I was never going to get that money back. Uh, the other uh, the other administration sat on that for two years, but when President Biden was elected, he included the Butch Lewis Act in the uh, in the American Rescue Plan, and uh, let me get my I forgot me get my glasses on there. Uh, <laughs> And uh, as soon as he came to office, and Vice President Harris, when it came up for a vote, uh, it was a tie vote, Vice President Harris cast a tie-breaking vote. So, <laughs> when you go to vote, just remember, not a single Republican in Congress voted to save thousands of union pensions. So, And this just wasn't for Teamsters. I mean, this is this has saved thousands of pensions across the country, from union musicians to bricklayers to Teamsters to sheet metal workers and many of the other trades. So I personally thought I was never going to get this pension back, but because of the uh, you know this great piece of legislation, my 30% cut was restored, and I got a 37-month back pay check. So. <laughs> So for me personally, that was a thousand a month restored, and I got a back pay check for thirty-seven thousand dollars. <throat> Which I did have to pay taxes on, but that wasn't too bad. Uh, but uh, that, that was huge, and you know, people now are always complaining about inflation and stuff, and you know, Facebook warrior stuff, and I'm like. For that money, I was able to buy a lot of groceries, put some gas in the, t in the truck, and invest a little bit in the record-setting uh, stock market that we have. Uh, 
I just wanted to end with a grateful thank you to President Biden and Vice President Harris for all the families that benefited from this great victory, for the working families of America. It matters when you have a president and vice president who has your back and who sees you and believes in you. And it's why here in the proud union state of Pennsylvania, I'm honored to introduce the most union-friendly president in American history. Please welcome one of our own, President Joe Biden. <laughs> Not him. I'm not him. Not him. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Dean. I live in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania with my wife and two children. I've been a UFCW 1776 member for 36 years at Acme Markets. The last eight of those years, I've had the honor of being the shop steward at my store, 3788 in Bryn Mawr. When I first became a shop steward, other than the day-to-day -day duties, I would often get hit from senior union members, hey, John, what's going on with the pension? After going to a few meetings and gathering information, I had the answers, and they weren't good. Our pension was about to become insolvent in, early, in late 2025 or early 2026, and the only chance of fixing that was to get the Butch Lewis Act passed. But with a Republican-controlled Congress and Donald Trump as president, that task seemed virtually impossible. In 2020, suddenly there was hope with the election of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. The first major piece of legislation they passed was the American Rescue Plan. The American Rescue Plan provided funding for COVID vaccine distribution and testing, as well as the child tax credit the act also had the Butch Lewis Act involved. This act saved multi-employer pension funds that were in trouble through no fault of their own. For once, there was a bailout for working people instead of corporations. <laughs> President Biden signed the American Rescue Plan on March 11, 2021, and it was life-changing for our members and their families. Thanks to the Biden-Harris administration, our pension, which was on the verge of being insolvent by 2026, is now secure into the 2050s. I know I'm not the only shop store who's had the opportunity to have senior members retire knowing that thanks to this legislation, they can retire with the dignity we all deserve. So on behalf of myself, and the members of UFCW 1776, past and present, we would all like to say, thank you, Joe. country's working because the middle class is growing. Middle class built this country, and unions built the middle class. Look, it's always great to be working with men and women in the great union movement. You know, Wayne Miller of the Sprinkler Fitters, Local 692, who fact, thanks for hosting us today. Wayne, my staff says you even fed them. I don't know. I'm going to worry about going home. And Wendell Young, UFCW, yeah. 76. And Bill Hamilton, president of Pennsylvania Conference of Dignity. Yeah. I also want to thank the great champions of working people here. Brendan Boyle, the hell of a guy, man. He's stuck with no. And Mary Gay Scanlon. I tell you, I think I heard a reputation because, you know what, I found out, you know, once you become elected president, I'm only the second Catholic ever elected when I headed to Ireland. 
They did all this background stuff on me, where I'm from. Well, it turns out, I showed her today, I got it in writing, we're related. <laughs> I tell you what, and uh, Madeline Dean, where are you, Madeline? Yeah. Good night, and Donald Norcross. Hey, Donald. And our acting Secretary of Labor, Julie Sue, is doing an incredible job. And the guy, if you're in trouble, you're in a foxhole, man, you want him with you. That guy right there, what's his name? Bobby. Bobby, good to see you. You're great. I'm, I'm serious. He's always, always there. Look, know the simple truth, as I said. Wall Street, and the, please, if you have seats, take them. <laughs> Look, I'm not joking around when I say that, you know, we talk, I come from Delaware. I represented Delaware for 36 years in the United States Senate. And uh, by the way, for 36 years, each year they list the poorest man in Congress. Oh, I'm not joking. 36 years, I was in House and Senate, the poorest man in Congress. Never thought myself poor, but I guess came from a typical middle-class family. They're breaking your neck. My dad used to have an expression, say, Joey, a job's about a lot more than a paycheck. A job's about your dignity. It's about respect. It's about being treated with respect. It's about being able to look people in the eye. Be able to look your kid in the eye and say, honey, it's going to be okay and know it's real. That's what this is all about, man. I'm so sick and tired. Sick and tired of the corporate notion of that of all if corporations do well, we all do well. I want corporations to do well as long as their employees do well. But man, the way it's working now and the way it's been working, not been working so well. Look, and I so I mean what I say. Wall Street did not build this country. They're not bad guys. They're just a little greedy sometimes. But they're not bad guys. But I mean, the middle class built the country. And it's not a joke. You guys built the middle class for real. There would be no middle class. Not a Look, just since I've been elected, and I'm proud to be listed as the pro most pro-union president of American history, the middle class has grown. The middle class is growing. They're the best economy in the world right now because of you. Thank you, John Dean and John Fisco, John, both Johns, for the introduction. And most of all, thanks for sharing your stories. Look, think about what they just described. You all understand it well, but the folks maybe listening don't quite understand as much. It's a story so many union workers could tell about working for decades to raise a family. Working for decades, just, I remember my dad lost a pension. We lived in a three-bedroom house, split-level home, and down in Wilmington, Delaware, when they are in a suburban area of Wilmington when they were building like 44 homes, the same kind of homes. They were a decent home, but we had four kids living there and a grandpa. And I remember how restless my dad was one night because my wall, my bedroom, was up against his when my, me and my th two brothers were in that room. And I asked mom next morning, I said, what's the matter? He said, but dad, they just, they just lost his pension. Just lost his pension. Put, look, putting money away from a paycheck to paycheck for dignified retirement, knowing that when the time comes that pension you've earned will be there, is critical just for peace of mind. It has phenomenal impacts on how marriages work and how families hold together when you have that knowledge because there's so much pressure. But then you retire and find out all those years of work and sacrifice are slashed through no fault of your own, none. Imagine what that does financially, emotionally, and to your dignity. It's wrong. It's just, it's just simply wrong. It should have never happened. Never. But then think about what it means to be made whole again. To have your lives, your pension restored. Not only don't have to worry about it, but about what you're going to be able to do. It matters. It matters. Four years ago, Kamala and I inherited a pandemic that was raging and the economy was reeling. So we went to work right away and we enacted the American Rescue Plan that did a lot more than just pension for the most significant economic relief package in the history of America. Delivered immediate relief to folks that need it most. But not a single, and this is what's changed. I was a Senate long, I know I'm gonna look like I'm 40, but I'm a little older. <laughs> but all kidding aside, 
we used to have real differences in the in in the uh, in the Senate, but at least when the critical things we we end up getting together, but not anymore. This is this is a different this is a different deal we're working with. Not a single solitary Republican in the House or the Senate, not one, voted to help with the pensions. Not one single one. No, no, I, I, it's, a, it's not so much about, it's the way things have gotten. You know, it's like you either vote the right way of one guy wants it or you're in trouble. It's wrong. It's not who the hell we are. I believe a lot of those Republicans who voted no thought it was wrong. But they're afraid to vote the right way. As part of the American Rescue Plan, Kamala and I work like hell to include the Butch Lewis Act to protect the pension of millions of union workers and retirees from Pennsylvania, throughout Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, all across America. Simply put, the Butch Lewis Act is the most significant investment in pension security for union workers and retirees in over 50 years. And I might add, it's not enough. We've got to do a hell of a lot more, but I'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> and again, every, every guy on the other team voted against it, every single one. Think about that. Before the Butch Lewis Act became the law of the land, union workers and retirees faced cuts of up to 70 percent or more of the retirement benefits through no fault or none. But now, because of what Common and I did in Congress, and folks like Brandon Boyle and others, because of the labor leaders that are here, because of many of you, Pensions of millions of union workers and retirees are protected. Food warehouse workers, truck drivers, scores of others don't worry anymore about the benefits being cut because now they know, because of what we've done, they'll receive the full amount of their pensions they've worked hard for, and they'll receive it for decades to come. Folks, look, for all those retirees whose benefits are already cut, as you heard today, and many of you hopefully benefited as well. We made whole again. All the all the all the all you lost will be made up. And those with benefits restored and restored retroactively. But folks, that's what I call a pretty big deal. Folks. So I came to North Philly today to announce major progress we made in implementing the Bush Lewis Act. But this morning, the U.S. Department of Labor released a report which shows that since we passed the law in March of 2021, we've already protected the pension of over 1.2 million, 1.2 million workers and retirees. And that includes over 65,000 workers and retirees across Pennsylvania alone. For retirees whose benefits are cut or at risk of being cut, we paid them back more than $1.6 billion so far. That's about $13,600 already paid back in the pockets of each retiree, and some are even more. It's a game changer. Today, I'm also announcing $684 million from the Butch Lewis Act to restore pensions for additional 29,000 members of the United Food and Commercial Workers Union. Thank you, so, don't thank me, thank you. You shouldn't have to thank anybody. You shouldn't have to thank anybody. Look, there are nearly 11,000 workers and retirees living right here in Pennsylvania. For years and years, union workers have been driving trucks from factories to stores, bagging your groceries, constructing your buildings, your bridges, your roads. We need to do so much more. For iron workers, bricklayers, carpenters, laborers, plumbers, truck drivers, food workers, and more. These workers are working hard today. They deserve a secure retirement they've earned for the rest of their lives. Folks, look, we're just getting started. By the way, that little, that little big bill we passed for, you know, dealing with infrastructure, a trillion, three hundred billion dollars, that's what that bill is worth. Remember the last guy when he was president, he said, we're going to have, we have retired, we have, he had every week, we have infrastructure week. Never been, he didn't do a damn thing. But you know, too many of them.
face painful cuts to the benefits they worked so hard and counted on. Some of you losing 40, 50, 70 percent up to your pensions through your, no fault of your own. That's why the Butch Act, Lewis Act is so important to pass in the first place. And when it comes to office, when, it came to the, when I came to office, I was determined to restore guaranteed pensions that were earned and paid into. I was also determined to fundamentally transform the way the economy works for everyone. You know, I got so sick and tired of the trickle-down economics. Remember that's how it worked? The rich, if they do well, they'll pay their taxes and they'll trickle down and we'll all benefit. Well, not a hell, hell lot to trickle down to my father's kitchen table. No, I'm not joking. This is I'm dead. I'm dead earnest here. To grow the economy, we decided to change the way we did it. And if you know, there's no reason why you wouldn't notice. But all the international economic publications are talking about it now. I decided we're going to grow the economy from the middle out and the bottom up. When the middle class does well, everybody does well. The wealthy do well. Put workers first. Support unions. Invest in all Americans. All Americans. When we do these things, we do well. That's what we're seeing. 16 million new jobs created just so far. The greatest job creation record of any single presidential term in American history. 1.6 million manufacturing and construction jobs. And where is it written in America can't lead the world in manufacturing? I got so tick and tired of hearing that we can't. Come on, man. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Think about it. We have the best workers in the world. That's not hyperbole. That's a fact. When I decided to bring back the chips in the industry back, we invented that little chip that goes in all those computers. We invented it. We used to have 40 percent of the market. We got down to 4 percent of the market. Well, guess what? I told my staff, even they thought I was crazy. I said, I'm going to South Korea. I'm going to sit down with them and make sure that they start, we start making this stuff home. So that was Samsung. They invested $15 billion coming back to the United States to build those chips here and build those factories here. But over $60 billion more is being, is being made here. And it's just getting started. We're just getting started. These fabs, they call them. They're the biggest football fields. These fabs. You know what the average salary is? $110,000 a year, and you don't need a college degree. <laughs> and we're just getting started. This past week, we get very encouraging news about the economy. Inflation continues to drop. Remember, they said, Biden's going to get elected, it's going to be a recession. <laughs> Give me a freaking break. <laughs> We got it back down from close to 9 percent down to nearly 2 percent, which means people have more money in their pockets now than they did before the pandemic, and we're continuing to see economic growth. Today, union workers are modernizing American infrastructure, roads, bridges, airports, ports, clean water, affordable high-speed internet for every Pennsylvania, not some, every. And thanks to the bipartisan infrastructure law, Pennsylvania has received $18 billion so far for 2,000 projects. So far. And that includes a billion dollars for the city of Philadelphia in a few months since Mayor Parker's been office. They already got a billion dollars to it. Look, folks. I signed an executive order to make sure large federal construction projects use project labor agreements that are negotiated. Not a joke. Negotiated between unions and companies before the construction begins because you're, cause we make sure construction is top notch on time and on budget. And by the way, by the way, employers are starting to figure it out. Not a joke. I told you about Samsung when they I said, "Why are you coming to back to the why are you coming to the United States?" I said two reasons. One, you have the best workers in the world. Here, I'm not a joke. Most qualified workers and people think I wish union would start talking about what it takes to get to become whatever you decide to be, whether anything from electrician to whatever. You have to do somewhere between four and five years of apprenticeship. It's like going back to school, man, like going to college. But people don't know it. People don't know it. We got to talk more about it. So people who aren't unions understand just how damn qualified you are and how hard you work to get to where you are. You know, by American, used to be the law of the land. By that, by that it is, look, the way it works, supposed to work, from back in the 30s, 
when they were trying to bust unions and prevent them from coming into being in the first place. But they passed a law in the Roosevelt, which said that if you're going to have, if you're going to try, if you're going to form a union, you can't do the following things to try to break the union. But there was a provision in there and that, no, that nobody paid attention to. It said, and when the president spends money given to him by the Congress to do something for the country, he has to use American products and he has to buy, use American workers. Nobody did it. No, not a joke. Well, every damn penny I've been sent by the United States Congress has been gone to use American product and American workers. Everyone. Not a joke. It's why we're growing so well. Federal projects helping build American roads, bridges, highways are now being made with American products, built by American workers, creating good paying American jobs. In fact, we're requiring those kinds of projects to pay Davis-Bacon wages for every single family out there. Look, folks, many of those jobs don't require a college degree, but they, look, in fact, we, we extended the registered apprenticeship program. Remember when the corporation said, don't worry, we'll take care of training, we'll, we'll take care of apprenticeships? Give me a break. <laughs> so what did we do? We decided we were going to make sure they were available. The result being, over a million apprentices since we've come to office. A million new apprentices have come to office. And like I said, a lot of folks don't realize an apprenticeship is like earning a college degree. An apprenticeship you train for four or five years. They're some of the best workers in the world. Common and I have already believe, always believed that National Labor Relations Board should be pro-labor. But. Those of you involved in leading unions, you know what it's been on the last guy. Anti-labor people put on the, on the Labor Relations Board. Not anymore. Not anymore. That's why we, one of the most significant things we've done is appoint Na National Labor Relations Board members who actually believe in unions and believe in your right to organize. As I said, I'm honored to be considered the most pro-union president in American history, and I'm proud to be the first president to walk a picket line. And Kamala is proud to have walked a picket line as well. The other guy looks for picket lines to cross, but we've always had your back. We've always had your back. Well, look, let me, I don't want to get going here. We owe you so much. I really mean it. The country owes you so much. Let me close with this. When I was uh, being raised in Scranton, where my dad taught me something that always stuck with me, and I mentioned to you before that a job is a lot, lot, lot more than a paycheck. And it really is. Think about it. Think about what it is. It's about your dignity. It's about how you're treated. It's about how people look at you, look up to you, not down at you. It's about your place in the community. It's about being able, as I said, to look your kid in the eye and say, honey, it's going to be okay, and mean it. Mean it. That's the value set I learned here in Pennsylvania. The value set that's at the core of the labor, at the core of the American labor market, union market. A movement made up of extraordinary people like you. And I'm not just trying to be nice, man. I'm not running again. <laughs> You're stuck with me. And the one thing I don't think anybody can argue as I never haven't done what I've said I'm going to do. So, and like someone we honor today, Butch Lewis, joining us today is his wife, Rita. Rita, where are you? Come on up here. Come on up here. Rita and Butch were childhood sweethearts. Butch played baseball, drafted by the Pirates, by the way, out of high school. Come over here for me. We'll walk over there in a minute. And he enlisted in the Army instead. Special Forces, Army Ranger, served in Vietnam. Earned the Bronze Star and the Purple Heart. Came back home to Rita, settled in Cincinnati, became a Teamsters trucker, and then president of his local. Known as an honorable, honest, decent labor leader. That's who he was. Bush faced severe cuts in pensions, 
and became a fierce advocate of protecting those pensions for fellow workers. He died almost nine years ago. And Rita, you've carried on his legacy ever since then. This is a woman who didn't stop. Together with Democrats in the Congress, <laughs> The Bush-Lewis Act I signed into law now protects pensions for millions of American workers, and it matters. Rita, uh, can you please join me over here? The Citizens Medal is given to citizens of the United States of America who have performed exemplary deeds of service for their country or their fellow citizens. A fierce labor leader, Butch Lewis helped to protect hard-earned pensions of millions of Americans. He passed up a shot at professional baseball, instead serving our nation as a decorated Army Ranger in Vietnam. He spent 40 years as a trucker, teamster, and union leader, fighting for the dignity of work and solidarity of workers across Ohio and the country. A man of humility and warmth, he inspired everyone around him, embodying the simple truth that the middle class built America and unions built the middle class. My dad had another expression. He used to say, for real, remember, Joey, family is the beginning, the middle, and the end. Thank you all for being loyal to one another, not forgetting where you come from, and sticking with those you need to help. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.